Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to put together the main shaft on a T56 transmission. Let's get started. All right, so let's go over the parts real quick. Uh, on the table in this, this first row up here, I have all the parts that came out of the transmission. So all the used stuff. And the second and kind of third row here, I have all of the new stuff. And of course, a new, brand new main shaft. So, Everything from this part of the main shaft, this direction is all third gear and fourth gear stuff, which is here and this way. Everything on this part of the main shaft is first gear, second gear, and then eventually the fifth and sixth gear set, which we'll get to later. But I did replace all of the wear parts. So that's brand new friction cones, uh, synchronizer, blocker rings, new bearings, uh, new taper bearings and new snap rings um, and new synchros since the teeth were all messed up on on the synchros coming out of the transmission so a bunch of new parts so let's get this thing put together first thing that we're going to do is press this taper bearing onto the end of the main shaft so we'll take it over to the lift the lift <laughs> this is it's kind of a lift lift is here next to it that's what I meant. Take it over by the lift. <laughs> by the lift. Thank you. All right. So in order to press this guy on, I'm going to lift the shaft up and use my little box here and press against this ring. So I need to let this guy up a little bit. I need a tool. Good enough. All right. I get this guy centered on there. Center everything up. Here we go. So it's just flush with the edge there. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is to put on third gear and then the third gear, fourth gear synchronizer selector. So first thing that's gonna go on is the new cage bearing. So we're gonna dunk that beep, in the transmission fluid and we're gonna splash it everywhere. This is gonna get messy, huh? Oh, this is gonna get super messy. All right, so that's gonna go on. And then we're going to reuse the spacer out of the old gear. All right, so we don't need that. That's the old one. And then third gear is going to go on. So you may have to hold this bearing together to get it on there. There we go. So that feels good. And the next thing is going to be a blocker ring. So, want to get that nice and lubed up. These are actually a stage two upgraded blocker rings, and instead of using the normal Kevlar, maybe friction material in stock, I'm not sure exactly what it is stock. This uses carbon fiber rings. I don't know if can you see it, like the carbon fiber design in that friction material. Yeah, pretty sweet. All right, so that's gonna go on right there. All right, and the next thing is pressing on the third and fourth gear synchronizer. So let's get this set up in the press real quick. For the synchronizer assembly, this actually rotates with the shaft, so this is gonna get pressed on to those teeth. So I have everything set up in the press here, just like we were before. So I'm gonna slide the synchronizer assembly on Get it kind of aligned. Okay. And then I used a two and a half inch uh, OD piece of exhaust tubing that I cut down. So that's going to be what we're using to press because we have to press against this inner portion here. You don't want to press against the synchronizer ring because that moves. And then I have a block of wood. Here we go. Okay. 
Okay, got some load on it. Just making sure everything looks good. I'm gonna go real slow. All right, so at this point, I wanna make sure that these little grooves on this blocker ring are lined up with the keys on the underside of the synchro selector ring. So I have those aligned and now I'm gonna keep going real slow. Alrighty. All right, I'm gonna let the pressure off and look to see how much further we gotta go, and I'll show you why. All right, so we have the synchronizer kinda pressed down a little bit of the way, but it's not all the way. So there's gonna be a C-clip that goes in here. There's a groove in these teeth. So we need to keep pushing this down until that groove is visible. Okay, let's see what that looks like. All right, so, so close. There's like just a tiny little bit more to go until we're completely flush on those teeth. Now that we got that guy pressed on, be real careful. Bring back over the table. All right, so the next thing that's gonna go on is the new snap ring. And that guy's gonna go right in there, but I need to get my snap ring plugged. Very important. Can you see, is it focused? Mm -hmm. So see how there's a taper on the snap ring to make these sharp little points. You want those points facing up so that the next guy that puts this transmission together can actually get in there and grip those little points with his C-clip pliers. Here we go. C-clip is installed or make sure it's seated underneath the teeth all the way around. Which it is. What you thinking about? Power shifting. <laughs> All right, so that takes care of everything that is on this side of the main shaft. So now we're gonna work on the other side. So the first thing that's gonna go on is second gear. So I got a new cage bearing and a whole new gear for second gear. It's fine, it's a plastic table, hopefully. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, uh, second gear was super chewed up from all the power shifting. We talked about that in the last video. Oh, by the way, if you haven't seen the complete teardown video of the uh, T56, I'll put a link to it right here. Go check it out. Um, sweet. What was I saying? Oh yeah, second gear. So we need to get the cage bearing all lubed up. Sweet, so that's gonna go on. Okay. And then second gear is gonna go on. The synchro assembly goes between first and second, so we need to make sure that we put the teeth to the outside. So that's gonna go on. Actually, you know what? Let me turn this up like this. And make this a little bit easier. Hopefully it doesn't fall over. All right, here we go. Sometimes you gotta squeeze it together. I'm gonna get this thing to go on. So the next thing is the thrust washer, the inner cone, the friction cone, and then the blocker rings. All right, so here's the stack up for the second gear side. You have all these parts. You have the blocker ring, friction cone, 
the cone, cone, <laughs> I don't know what it's called, in the thrust washer. So these parts get reused. This part does not get reused because I'm replacing it with this part. And this part does not get reused because, wait, this part does get reused, I think. Let me make sure. All right, yeah, so this part does get reused because it's just a friction surface, but not the friction material. So it's going to go in there like that some way. This is going to fit into there like this. And then that is going to fit inside of the blocker ring, kind of like that. So we'll put it on in order, but first we need to get this guy dunked in fluid. Sweet. So that's in. So it's going to be this guy. That's going to lock in. It locks in real good. Cool. Then it is going to be this guy. It's going to lock into that. And it's going to be the friction ring. Cool. And those teeth on that friction ring fit into the spaces into that gear. And that's what grabs the gear and brings it up to speed when you make a shift. And then the blocker ring. Cool. So that's the stack up for that. So then the synchro assembly, selector assembly goes on. And this is what's going to need to get pressed. So, for review. <laughs> This is the order that things went on. First, it was the thrust washer, then the inner friction cone, then the friction ring, I guess, I don't know what it's called, then the blocker ring, and then these grooves in the blocker ring are going to line up with the teeth in the synchro. Sweet. And then this gets pressed on, just like we pressed on second gear. Let's or third gear. This is second gear. Yeah. All right. All right. So everything is lined up in the press. Now, this is a quick disclaimer. I'm using Schedule 40 uh, electrical PVC conduit because it's the only thing I have in the shop. Um, this is the two inch which is perfect to actually hit this uh, diameter here on the synchronizer. I do not recommend using PVC. I don't think there's going to be much resistance to get this on, so I'm not that concerned about it. But don't use PVC. I'm dumb. <laughs> don't be dumb. All right, so we're about to press the synchronizer on. And I want to make sure that these grooves, just like before, are lined up with the teeth or the keys in the synchronizer. So if you look up here, you can see that key. There's one there and one there. There's three of them. So you want to make sure that these slots are lined up with those keys whenever you go to press. And we'll check periodically once we get close to. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay. 
Okay, that looks like it's bottomed out. <laughs> and they put some grace on there. <laughs> Looking pretty good. So here's another groove for a snap ring, but the other side thrust washer needs to go there. So let me make sure that we have enough clearance. And you see how there's space? Yay! Space all the way around for that guy to go in, which means pressed that we're pressed far enough, yep. Next is first gear. So I have the new caged needle bearing for first gear. Get that guy lubed up. And it goes on. Come on, little guy. Oh, what happens is they're at the wrong angle. What I saw is if you spin it, it flings them all out uh -huh. and then it drops it down. So uh -huh. sort of worked there. Okay, so then it's first gear going on. And remember the teeth towards the synchronizer. So it's gonna go this way. And we're being careful. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Carefuling so good. I'm not good at being careful. So can you look at the side here? So those teeth that are standing up from that middle friction cone have to align with the teeth in the gear, just like that. And it's on there. And next up is gonna be the main shaft large tapered bearing, which is this guy. It looped up a little bit. Got us a new one of those. Yep. And this sits down in the case, so the taper is going to be up like that. And this is supposed to more or less kind of slide on. But it's a really tight fit. There we go. And then there's a tiny little groove around there. And that is for this little tiny rubber O-ring, which its whole purpose is to keep everything from sliding off whenever we turn this thing around. Apparently it was like to aid the manufacturers in putting this together. That's what I've been told anyway. So that'll fit down in that little groove. Sweet. There it is. So this is where we stop on the main shaft for right this second, uh, because this portion of the main shaft is in the mid case part of the transmission or uh, in the tail housing part of the transmission. This is all in the mid case. All right, next time we're gonna get the adapter plate and main case all cleaned up and ready to receive all of this goodness. So today we were able to finish up the main shaft we don't have to do anything with the counter shaft or any of the shift linkages or the input shaft. All that's good to go and we'll drop right in. Once that's done, we can come back over here and start working on everything having to do with fifth and sixth gear and reverse gear. And that includes the counter shaft extension. So I got a bunch of new parts for this as well and we'll get to that next time. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.